Well, it's another beautiful day in Saskatchewan, and uh, I'm stuck inside working on this rusted, stinking nightmare. So let's have a look at what we're going to be working on in today's video. Today we're going to tackle some of the rust in this cab. You can see by the state of things, it's not looking too good. We're going to have to build a new floor. This lower section basically complete right back to here. And it's rusted all the way up to here. Isn't that nice? So we'll put in some kind of Frankenstein patch in there. And then we've got to build a new inner cowl. As you can see, there's a hole where there shouldn't be a hole. Look at that. And on the outside, we have a similar situation. This is all gone away here. All of this is, it's supposed to be solid metal and it no longer is. Look at that, absolutely terrible. Now I kinda bit the bullet and actually spent some money on this. So I bought a new outer cowl panel, this inner piece. I'm gonna fabricate this piece and the floors, but uh, in the past, I've I've built this piece and just kind of built or patched this outer cowl, and uh, found time-wise is not really worthwhile. And with the cost of 18 gauge nowadays, it's also kind of cost prohibitive. So I'm gonna give this new inner panel a try and see how it fits and uh, whether or not it's worth buying again. But I thought it'd be worth it just to give it a try here. I should mention that none of this is going to be a how-to. I don't like doing how-to's. It's mostly just how I do things. And there's already hundreds of videos on YouTube on doing the rust repair on these trucks. And uh, to be fair, most of them are doing a better job than I care to on something like this. So we're just gonna, this is more meant as like a heartwarming, inspirational programming where it's like, hey, if this loser can rebuild this really terrible truck, then uh, my project isn't so bad. So I'll go out in the garage and uh, do some work on it now. Wouldn't that be nice? I should mention though that I've got two, maybe three of these cabs that we're gonna be doing some extensive rest repair on. So uh, if there is something on this that you would like to see more in detail, uh, let me know and if enough people want to see the same thing then uh, we can cover that in more detail and on another truck Now much like Western civilization this cab is on the verge of total collapse However, you shouldn't be afraid because I'm not a politician So I actually stand a good chance of uh, improving this rather than making it worse I'm gonna start by rebuilding the bottom of this pillar here and uh, just because right now this is basically the only thing that's actually holding all of this up. So I want to get this structurally sound again. Uh, probably wouldn't be a bad idea if you were doing this at home to, you know, figure out some kind of cross bracing so it doesn't move around. But uh, I've done enough of these trucks and uh, I've got a couple of them kicking around for reference that I don't, I don't really care if this thing falls apart. That makes for good YouTube when stuff like uh, breaks in half while you're trying to fix it. So I'm just gonna blindly dive in and start hacking away at this and welding and doing whatever. And if it uh, if it falls apart, it falls apart. I did make a few reference points in the door jam, you know, top to bottom and whatever, just so I have some idea when I go to put it back together. But uh, I'm not gonna waste a lot of time on this. So I'll just, as we said, we'll blindly dive in and hope for the best. If you're working on your project at home, you probably want to do a little more uh, planning and, you know, kind of shore things up a bit before you start cutting into it.
Okay, well, I got this bottom uh, post all rebuilt now, so we got some structure back into this thing. And I gotta rebuild all of this. And unfortunately, there's not really any way to get that reconstructed uh, without removing a lot more stuff. When, I, when I'm doing rust repair, I kind of like to tackle one assembly at a time rather than just mow all this out of here. Because if I cut all this out, well, for one, all the structure is completely gone. So it's just, there's nothing left. And for two, I lose all of my reference points. Now, now you can take measurements and make templates, all this until you're blue in the face, but all these edges and holes and whatever, those are hard reference points that aren't going to change. It doesn't take much for a template or a measurement to be out by 1 16th and you get a couple 1 16th discrepancies and next thing you know you're up to an eighth inch and then before you know it you're out by a whole mile and uh, this stuff doesn't change so we try to just rebuild things layer by layer rather than cut it all out at once even though it makes to some extent it makes it a little difficult to get into certain areas when you got stuff in the way once you cut all this out then it, it, all that information is gone forever and you you're just playing a guessing game now eventually i'm gonna have to cut out uh, all of this but i want to get as much of the structure rebuilt as i can before i cut out you know the whole thing so that means we got to get this structure rebuilt where it ties into the cab mount. I've also, just as an added precaution, I uh, put a jack under this just to keep the cab from sinking down when we cut this out because I don't know if any of this is still attached to the cab mount or not. And uh, this, is, this will kind of give us a little added protection here. So I'll uh, start mowing this off and uh, if it all crumbles, we're going to try to film it. So because uh, when things go horribly wrong, that's uh, usually YouTube gold, so uh, we don't want to miss any of that. I got this reconstructed here and there's a certain amount of butchery that didn't need to be shown on camera, but either way, it's all solid now. So uh, there's kind of two different directions we can go. Originally the floor kind of came around and then bent down and then welded to here. But, and then the inner cowl also welded there. But this is kind of a common failure point on these trucks, or at least all the ones I've worked on. What happens is rust gets in there and then the spot welds will break apart and then the whole thing breaks loose. And so to avoid that, we kind of do a modified version of this to make life easier you'll see when we get to that stage but the other thing is the floor is still kind of holding this cab together a bit so we want to uh, avoid cutting that out right now I'm kind of curious to see how this piece is gonna fit into here so uh, we're gonna work on getting that piece put in and then the outer cowl and then at that point this post has the majority of the structure back into it and then we don't have to worry about things flopping around anymore when we do the floor and the inner cowl. Well, this is uh, about where we're at now. I can't remember where we left off last. I can assure you, you didn't miss a whole lot. What I'm doing now is I'm getting this outer cowl section fitted up. And you see we got it tack welded in a few places and it's just overlapping here right now. So what I'll do is I'll take the grinder at an angle and kind of slice through the bottom layer and then butt weld it together. I'm sure a lot of you watch uh, Fitzy's fabrications and he, he likes that technique. Normally I just scribe it and then cut to the scribe line, but I thought I'd show, show it a little different way this time. Uh, there's, just for clarification, there's about a one inch section of this old panel underneath here. So, you know, uh, another thing you can do if you want a tighter gap is you can use an air saw. Again, like I said, I, I prefer to just scribe the line and then trim it and then just butt weld it together. But this way works too. And I used to always do, do it this way, but uh, now I've kind of transitioned into just scribing stuff. It's just nicer fitment, but, and, you know, edges like this, it's really hard to, uh, 
to do a nice cut with a with an angle grinder if it's overlapped. So I've already kind of got this set up for a butt weld in through here. I've also been fitting up this inner transition panel here, and I have to say I'm quite pleased with how it's fitting. So um, certainly be buying that again. It saves me a lot of time over building uh, building one from scratch. And you might be asking why why didn't you use the whole panel? Wouldn't it be much better to just place it in at the factory seam? Uh, no, no, it wouldn't. Reason for that is uh, the factory stampings are always going to be better than the stampings on the aftermarket panels. The aftermarket panels, they basically give you kind of the rough shape, but usually they're kind of lacking when it comes to the edges. As soon as you start getting into complicated bends and curves on the aftermarket panels, they're just never... They never fit quite right and you know you're going to end up with the hood rubbing or just not having a good fitment here which it doesn't the hoods never fit on these trucks but at least when you got the factory line there you know you can make it work and you know it's designed to fit with the seals and everything else um, so i i prefer to use as little of the aftermarket panel as i can there was a bit of a crease here, which we were able to dolly out easily. I'd much rather, you know, do a welded seam along here than try to change the whole thing out. I did have to come up a little bit into here because it was rusted out, but uh, that's not a big deal. And the second and uh, probably primary reason why I don't replace this whole panel is there is a factory leaded seam through here and the panel as you can see, it has a step in it. And this step fits up underneath the upper cowl. And so there is no way to cleanly remove that without mangling this. And, uh, you know, it's the same all through here. So you start splitting that apart. You know, by the time you hammer it all back into shape and then weld it, then grind it down and now you've got a bunch of body work to do in this area otherwise it's just gonna look like garbage and then you've got a huge recess here which you've got to refill with with lead again and in this case other than this gouge the lead is still intact here so there's no reason to disturb it I do have a couple holes to fill but again I'd rather just weld up these holes and then we'll just do a little bit of body work on that gouge smooth this all out and just save ourselves a, a whole world of headaches. Now there was extensive damage going up into here. What I would do is I would just splice this panel in along this edge and then you know if I had to I would go into the lead seam here but what I do when I do these lead seams is I just cut them out and then just weld a plate in flush here and then that way I can just body work over it and it's smooth whereas the factory is recessed in you know a quarter to half inch and just caked with lead, which isn't really the great way to do. If I was doing this as a show truck, I would still cut this out and, you know, flush well the piece in. I think there's a video, like the very first video I did on the channel is me replacing one of these with a flat piece of metal. And it's not a very good video, but I guess it does give you an idea of what's going on there. If you're curious, which you're probably not. Final thing I'll mention is while I did measure before I cut anything apart, the uh, distance here, um, I did want to refit the door. I thought about just not refitting it and going for broke, but I'm glad I did because the one time you don't fit something is when it turns into a nightmare. And you can see now on these trucks, the doors never fit right from new. So, and the only way to get the doors to fit absolutely perfect to modern standards is to start cutting and welding. So what I do is I just make sure the body lines are close and the door opens and closes without rubbing. And actually on this truck, the fitment is probably one of the better ones I've seen. I, I've yet to see it, a truck with factory gaps that actually fits good. But this is definitely one of the better ones. We've got fairly consistent gap all the way through here and it fits reasonably flush all the way through not great but uh, again it's not uh, it, it never was to begin with so 
And back here, you can see the gap isn't great. This is where there would be cutting and welding involved. It's actually not even close to the right profile. This profile is way more rounded than what's on the door. So the only way to fix this would be to cut out this section basically from here to here and then flatten it out so that it matches the door. And the door sticks out here a bit. And then as you go down towards the bottom, it starts getting flush. So because the gap here is tight, the way I would fix that is I would slice basically from here, probably all the way down to here, and then bring this section of the cab out and then add in piece of filler rod or a new piece of metal in that edge and while at the same time I would also open up this gap through here so it's consistent all the way through and then re-weld the whole thing and grind it all down and that's a lot of monkeying around for uh, for what we're doing on this project this is just but you know if somebody wanted to they could still do that because we have the doors set in a manner where they open and close now if I put this all together and welded it all and the door is rubbing here and uh, it wouldn't open or whatever then we'd have a mess on our hands but this is kind of we have it set up now where it can be taken to the next level or it can be left as is and it's a functioning door so it's always a good idea to refit your door several times while you're doing rust repair like this because if the door doesn't fit then it's game over and you got real problems on your hands so the uh you know, 10 to 15 minutes it takes to put a, bolt the door on will save you hours or days of, of rework. You know, when I was working at collision shops, we have guys who would uh, weld a quarter panel or something on without refitting the door and then the car would go to paint and it come back and nothing would fit because you were too lazy to take 10 minutes to fit the door. Now you've got, you know, two days of swearing and cutting and and the car's got to go back to paint again and just makes a big mess and uh it's usually the guys with uh you know 30 40 years experience doing that and uh they're also usually the loudest guys in the shop who have to remind everyone every day how great they are and uh so you know you don't feel too bad about them when they have to eat a uh, humble pie but of course you know next week comes and they're uh, back to their old self again but that's why i don't work in a body shop anymore i guess or one of the reasons the other reason is that new cars suck. Anyways, um, I'm going to leave the door on. I'm going to weld this in place and then I'll get this inner brace welded in as well. And once I get that locked in, then I'll weld this last because I have to remove the door to weld that to this post. But I do want to get as much of this locked into place so that it's not going to move around on me when I take the door off again. So if we get structure into this, then uh, it should be, it shouldn't move around too much because I'm relatively pleased with how it fits now. So I'll quit rambling and we'll uh, cut to some, uh, some welding and stuff. I well, got that all welded on there now, and uh, it's all secured. I uh, still gotta pull these holes out. I'm gonna leave the mirror holes, but I'm gonna get these pulled out and welded up. And by pulled out and welded up, I mean welded up and uh, coated with kitty hair when the cameras aren't rolling. I do a little bit of butchery around here. Gotta say these uh, these inner pieces the inner to outer cowl panel i think this is called this whatever you want to call it fits quite well and so does the outer cowl panel so i uh, definitely uh those have my recommendation i guess for uh as 
far as aftermarket panels go, I was quite pleased with them. Obviously, if I had used all up into here, it'd probably be a different story, but uh, I don't uh, aim to find out anytime soon, so I'm very happy to just splice it in there and call it a day. Won't take uh, too much body work to get that sorted out. The cab corner welded on, nothing too uh, spectacular there, just blasted it on with a MIG. Little trick for these, if you can, is save the uh, the edge on the jam, if it's not rusted out, and just splice it in on that edge. So I found the cab corners, the, the, the edges they come with are not even close to fitting fitting the profile of the door. So I usually just hack it off and then cut off this and leave a little extra on and fit the cab corner and uh, to where it fits best. And then I cut and splice it in on that edge. And that way I still have the factory door edge there that actually fits. But obviously if this is rusted, then you can't do that. <laughs> 